Hey, I'm going to ask you to pay attention for one minute. I know the video is just starting off, but um, it's going to be important to get this information out really, really quickly. I know a lot of you want a lot of tips very quick. I did a video for Star of Valor for like 50 tips. It was just way too long, so let me put this out here quick. There's going to be chapters under below on the timelines you can zip through. If you don't want to hear any of this stuff, that's perfectly fine. Skip forward through the next to the next chapter. It'll, be, it'll say Section 1. And it'll go off and you go all through all the stuff. For the rest of you, what's going to happen is there's too much information to give you too quickly. And I'm going to put a little preamble right after this about what's going on. So I'm going to give you a bunch of information. It's going to be tips on how to play the game, how to save time, how to avoid things. It's not going to be a walkthrough. It's going to be things I wish I knew, things I hope I do every time I play the game, every time I play any kind of mission that apply to every single map, every single kind of area. There are a lot of generalizations after playing the game and putting my, smashing my head against the wall and going, oh, it doesn't work this way or it does work this way. It'll save you a bunch of time. It'll let you get in the game quicker. I won't spoil anything. I won't do an exact walkthrough on how to do every single mission. That's not my intention. It's just to give you a bunch of information to see if you want to play the game, look at the game, wishlist the game, or say, nah, this isn't my kind of game. And that's what the chapters are for. For the rest, for everything else, it'll be sections. I'll say, hey, it's time for a new section. And then there'll be like four or five or six or seven points in that section. And it'll go to the next section. It'll all be titled in the timelines. And there's going to be some other videos, which will be explained right after this clip. Okay? So give me a second. I wanted to put this next... Yeah, I'm going to open up this a little bit more. Um... This next piece, I gotta put out there real quick. I've been editing and trying to put the videos together now for a couple days. They gave me access about a week early, and I wanna make sure I told you all. Uh, I know a lot of you want a lot of information, and I can't put it all in one video without making the thing 90 minutes to 120 minutes long, which I know none of you want. So I'm letting you know right up front, I'm gonna break this into videos that are a little more digestible. I'm gonna try to keep it under 30 minutes per video. Um, there are right now, currently, I have nine sections. Each one has at least four to seven points um, that take anywhere from one to three minutes to explain visually. I want to make sure you all know there's going to be a video every day until that, that information is out. Not because I want to hit the algorithm and make people watch a lot of videos because I know that if I, I did it last time I, I did a video for this game called Star Valor and the video I thought would be like 30 minutes long maybe 45 at most was 95 minutes long and I was like oh my and people were like dude what the hell what's with this length and it's because there's a lot of information you can't cover an entire game I have about 20 hours in the game as we as we sit and there's way too much so I figure I'll let you guys know and gals know and of course everyone else that I am going to cut it apart. I'm going to put a video out every single day until it's done. Um, and these, these, you know, it's the first week. Uh, the game goes live in about eight hours from this post, and um, or it's eight hours from when it's about to go live. And um, I have a lot of information, but I can't. I, no matter how much I cut it down or speed myself up talking, um, it just doesn't flow naturally. And I had to let you know. So the, all the sections right after this are perfectly fine. You're gonna get like a full video here, but I want to put this out real quick as a kind of a um, mea copa, I guess. And I'll make sure I get as much as I can out as quick as I can. If you want to come say hi to me, I will be on Twitch, uh, streaming this every day until Monday night. Um, typically four to seven hours a day Thursday through Monday for this week and then I take off Tuesday Wednesday I, I might take off Monday to keep editing but we'll, we'll see how that goes so if you want to come see more feel free I'm sorry I took this little intermission for a second uh, and that's why I made it a chapter you can skip through it all right let's go on to the first tips One of the best things you can ever do in any game you play before you go on guides for YouTube. Do the tutorial. <laughs> Please, I'm begging you, do the tutorial. See, it even says though, so in a thing right above you. Before you jump into the first expedition, learn the base of the driving. Please. Um, this goes for every game ever, um, if you want to become better. The tutorial in this game is remarkably short. I'm going to do it again off stream because I want to see one little piece of information. I want to confirm before I tell it to you, and I'll see you in a few seconds. But yeah, thank you. 
The next one is, it's not really a tip, but it's more along the lines of it helps you know more about the game. In the Codex, there's a huge amount of information. Where I got a lot of my information, I sat there before I started playing the game at all. Before I even, I, I think I had just done the tutorial, which is, I think, honestly, three or four minutes. And I went through every single category, read every single entry all the way through, and made sure. It took me a while. It actually took me like a good 20 minutes to go through everything. But I read every little bit, little, 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 little bit of information I could find, and I wanted to make sure it tried to save me some time. And one thing in there I found was the, like the items thing I told you before or maybe after this one, where you lose 50% of the item you bring back to the expedition headquarters. So make sure you know that. There's a lot of good information here on how things work. A lot of activities, side activities, how they work, specialists, how they work, general. Everything's in there. Every little bit is in there if you look hard enough. Um, I'll make sure you have a visual representation because I'm a visual learner myself, and that's why I'm doing these videos. So let's go to the next one. This tip's a little more... I don't know if I wish to include it, so I'm just going to put it out there. Uh, if you're in an expedition, make sure you look at a few different things. One, when you finish an expedition, you may not be able to go back to an area until much later because right now in the grand canyon i've done all these ones with check marks but i can't go back anywhere i can't go back i can't go to ones i've been before as far as i'm aware i'm stuck uh i might be wrong on that can i go over there hmm no i can't so it's not letting me go in there but i want to make sure of that because i want to make sure i get the right information but i can go to another map which is this one, and do Skeletal Riches, which will let me open up a map on the Grand Canyon, which is just up here behind my ha my head. I'm sorry, it's a little bit, uh, the camera's in the way. But one thing I want you to do is before you pick your missions, one, show all rewards. See, what are you going to get for doing this mission? Because sometimes there'll be two available. Like right now I have Skeletal Riches and Main, main Exhibit. This one's going to give me the 8TA eight, eight B300 3000 engine. I'm not sure what, what that's for. Not sure what truck is for. I wish the game would let you scroll over it and find out, but I, maybe they'll fix it up in, in an update in the future. It also gives you bonus payments. Recover the truck less than three times, $500. Use jack screw more than five times is $500. So if you actually flip your truck multiple times and then... Re oh, no, sorry, the jack screw. Uh, I think that is the one that resets you, not the anchor point. And then recognize at least three random points of the map. And that's the one where I was telling you with the... Drone, if you scan around and find something, go, oh, you found it. That's discovered at once. When you use the Binox, I'm not sure it's exactly the same because I've been finding like three or four or five or six or seven points at a time, and it's like you still haven't found it. I'm like, I don't know if it's a bug. I don't know if it's, if it's because I'm not using the drone. I want to make sure people knew. And the other part you can do is after you see all this, you decide, I want to do this map, press map down here, and then look where you're going to be. That way you know roughly where you're going to be. And then if you're like, I don't want to, I don't want to see this map. I want, I know where I'm r roughly at. What's next? Go back and see where you're going to be deployed. It says, you know, skeleton. It'll flip off of the map one or two to the other one. So make sure it's always selected over here. And then it'll show you you're going one, two, three, four. It has watery terrain. You need two trucks. And there's going to be bridge construction. So if you know there's going to be bridge construction, for me, I know that I have to select my trucks that have a lot of parts to put those bridges down. It's not like SnowRunner where you carry a big item or on the back of your truck and dump it in. It's actually inventory parts which you need. So make sure you plan accordingly. For me, I have my, I can reconfigure one of my trucks like the Step to hold like 600 parts at a time. It's not as versatile as the ACT running around, but it, it will let you do it if you want. Depend, figure out what you want to do. You can use the Scout vehicle. I have like, I think, 250 on my scout vehicle for spare parts because I put all those extra racks in there and I'll show you another tip. All right, I just want to put this out front and uh, we'll go to the next one. I want to put this one out here for the first tip. Basically, we're going to go over all the things about modifying your trucks before you even get out on the road. I've shown you about expeditions. Now, let's use the first part. If you want to go out there and start off, you can go right off with stock and nothing has to change, and that's perfectly fine. But you have some really good trucks, and one of them is the Tuz 16 ACT AEON SE. Now this thing has a bigger tank, 42 gallons versus 37 on this one. So we're gonna change, check, check it. And one thing you have to do, if you wanna fix it, and go to the resources right here. Okay, I wanna make sure I'm actually recording this correctly. Yes. And this is how you modify your truck. Go in here and there's upgrades here. This is extras. This is cosmetic paint. This one is exterior stickers. 
I would recommend you go in here, and you don't have to change anything in here unless you want a different snorkel. Snor snorkels let you, if you're going through water, you might want to need one. Most of this can be perfectly left alone. What you want to look down, though, how is frame modules. And then you want to go for, where is it? Roof rack. The roof rack, there's a roof rack you can buy right off the bat. You have 3,500. Here, I'll move my camera for a minute. You have a $3,500 bill for a $33,000 uh, bank roll. You can put a roof rack on with four different slots. So let's put this on real quick. Now it's on there. And now you can fill slots by pressing F. And you can decide what goes in there, fuel or spare parts, right off the bat. Now if you're like, well, what do I need that for? I wouldn't do it right off the bat unless you know what you're doing. Um, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit, extra, a little bit of both if you're not 100% sure. If you're going to build bridges, each bridge from what I've been seeing is about 150 per bridge. So if you go to spare parts, 50, you put enough on here, you can put a whole bridge up on top of your truck and you can run around. This, is a, this makes a good little dual truck right now. You can be a scout with it. You can be a, a hauler with it. It's kind of both. I'd say do what you want, but I want to make sure you knew it was in there. It doesn't cost anything to put these in. Just remember, if you put them on, um, I don't think they get refreshed until the expedition is over. If you don't use them, I'm not sure what happens. They might be sold in it. They're very cheap. They're very cheap. And I want to make sure you're aware of them. Each slot has its own. You can put whatever you want, any combo of, of four in there. And I hope it helps you out. All right? Let's move on to the next tip. Let me actually hit the stop button. This one's kind of quick, but if you go onto a map for the first time, or an area that you haven't been in a while, or maybe you put by a field base, and you want to make sure you're like, what's nearby, without wasting a bunch of time looking for the map and scouting around, well, one thing you can do is get a metal detector. Metal detector works pretty well. Here's how it works. Turn your car on. And I'm, I move my camera here for now. I don't know if it's going to be a good spot or not, but for now, I'm going to keep my camera here. And then you go to deploy. Sorry, that's not deploy. That's something else. Wrong controls here. Put a metal detector. You can scroll out with your mouse bar or your mouse bar, your mouse wheel, or you can go around with uh, your joystick, whatever you're using. Hit detect. And I hit detect again. Boom, and it shows you everything under on top of your... If you're looking at your vehicle, you can see like, there's two upgrades that way. There's blue is equipment nearby over there. It's not exactly where it shows. Like, that one's up on the hill over there. I know that. And there's another one over that way. We don't know what they are. There's, there's actually trucks over that way. So it shows you some of the stuff. It makes your life a little easier by having the metal detector. If you're going to be scouting anyway the first time, you have to strike a balance between a roof rack on your vehicle with having more fuel or using the detector. And you can detect as many times as you want. It'll keep going out. Usually it stays there until you turn the thing down, though. You have the close button. Okay? Let's move on. Now this one is like is from the example from before. I put the modifications on top of the truck. You can see there's four parts containers on top. I can make a whole bridge out of this vehicle now. Mostly I want to make it the point across that better tires, better clearance, better suspension, better winches and add-ons can make the task massively easier on yourself. Most of you know that from probably other than the original Mud Runner. Uh, I think it was called Spin Tires before that. And Snow Runner, the better your, your gear, the easier it is for you to do anything with. Do whatever you think is appropriate, but I would say, I'm not saying go build meta builds. Um, in fact, I would say experiment with what you think works because the game has a few extra pieces that make the game a little different in terms of um, how to get over obstacles. Of course, you have your tires and traction and suspension, but you also have low gear, of course, but then they added a new feature, which is tire pressure. And tire pressure can make a big difference with going up small slopes over rocks where SnowRunner had mud, snow, um, gravel, and normal roads. There are, aren't really any roads in the game anymore. There's like maybe a hint of a road that kind of existed, and then instead they replaced it with rock. And your, your tires will actually have ratings for grip on rock or how much they perform against rock. And there's a lot of slipping going on. And you're trying to go up a hill, and your tires start slipping, you start going sideways. So I want to make sure you knew about it. Let's go to the next one. This is another one of the upgrades. Upgrades have a little change from SnowRunner. I'm not sure about MudRunner. I've never played MudRunner the original. This is a MudRunner's Expeditions. So let's take a little gander here. We'll show you something real quick. Boop. Go inside. Stop. Upgrade. Not available for current truck, which is nice. Uh, so what you do is make sure you hit show truck list. The Tuz H16AC. I think it's called Action. 
That's the little truck you can start out with. Now watch, the reason I'm gonna show you this is this. We got it. I'm gonna stop here. We actually have a quick little return to headquarters so I'm done the area. Actually, should I still have the area? There's an airdrop there, an airdrop there. What I could do, I'm not sure how I would get up here. I don't wanna get out of uh, what I'm doing. There's also an area this way into another region. Um, the one thing about the game that probably needs to be changed a little bit, or a couple things that would help out, they they hide missions behind other missions, and not like when I say like progression, more along the lines of if I go here, like that pops up. If I go to main task, if I focus in on it though, sometimes this, the symbol disappear, especially when I'm trying to do like my expedition, and it really you drive right by some things. I know people are going to be pissed off at that. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this little guide here is to make sure a lot of people go, oh, if I'm going to go in an area, I should stop for a minute and get uh, gaze around, okay? I'll bring it back, and when we come back into the store, I'll show you the upgrade. Bring it back. I wanted to show you that record, the uh, upgrade like I told you. What's going on here? If you select your vehicle, go to upgrades, which is customized, which is uh, what button? It's weird on this one. Um, go to here, upgrades. I am wrong. Huh. Oh, it's for the wrong vehicle. Sorry. That's right. It's over here. Derp. I'm special. So here it is for the right vehicle. You go in here. You go to customize. You go to over. And here's where it says right below me. See? Zzz, boop, new. So if you're like, what? upgrade that I get. I can't remember what I got. You can go through your menus of all your trucks, go to the upgrade menus, and it'll pop up here once at the off-road package. That's all it is, which is right here. Now I have stock installed in this one. I'm going to switch over. It gives you a free copy, by the way, which I think is really nice, versus having the other one. So right now the one I have is A minus B, A minus. This will be A minus B, B plus. However, it will, the fuel consumption will go down or go up a little bit, but the be able to shift will be a little bit better. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's go to the next tip. This one, I wanna make sure I made it a little more clear because the first time I said it wasn't very perfect about it. When you're trying to find stuff with the metal detector, it'll tell you what's nearby. And also it'll actually give you visual representation if it has an idea, all right? So here we go, this is the metal detector again. Boop. Detect, it shows you everything. And it shows you that that airdrop, which you can kind of see with the parachute on the crate marker is has at least one clamp inside of it or uh, mobile weight anchor points you can pull yourself up cliffs or go through mud holes and stuff like that however it does also show in the background there there's upgrades and they're showing two icons not one so i'm kind of sh wondering what's going on there i could have swore there was only one back there but maybe i'm wrong and i'm hoping i'm wrong because two upgrades would be great so let's go on to the next one found it. I had to go look for the damn thing. Um, basically, a lot of people are going to miss this. If you look under items, under the codex, it'll say items. Right down here at the very bottom. At the end of each expedition, you can see what my, I don't know if you can see where my mouse, I don't think you can see my mouse. Yes, you can. At the end of each expedition, when you return to the headquarters, all items in your inventory will be sold automatically for 50% of their value. Okay? Please keep that in mind but the next line is perfect items stored in the base and warehouse modules are saved between expeditions and can be used on your expeditions in that region so you don't have to buy like say a jack screw at 1500 sell it for 750 buy it back for next expedition over and over and over again to lose money you can put it in there let it sit there if you leave it there however if you're out in the field and you want to say i'm done this expedition and you teleport out with all your gear everything in every single truck's inventory will automatically be sold back even if you don't want it to be which I don't really like, but at the same time, I want to make sure you're all aware of it. So thank you. Let's move on to the next tip. This next section, this next section is on scouting. Scouting is going to be very important. After you've modified your trucks, you got them all ready, you're deploying what you want to deploy. Well, now you have to figure out how to play the game a little bit to make it a little easier on yourself. Now, the first one's going to be scouting. With scouting, when you come to a map for the first time, and I've made a new save file just for this specific example, you're going to want to like run out there and start doing every mission you possibly can. And that's fine. But what you should do instead is scout right off the bat. If you, can, if you want to save yourself time, because there's nothing worse than driving down the map all the way and going, wow, I did, it, I did this mission coming halfway back and realizing 
you didn't pick up a mission right next to the starting area, you got to go back out there again. And you're going to waste like an hour, two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty hours. That's what this game does. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time suck. Which every game is, if you think about it. So it's perfect. So I figure I'll let you guys know, figure out right off the bat that you have to do some scouting. So one thing you can do right off the bat when you start is you can turn your truck off for this. It'll save you fuel. Is go for the drone and just pull her up in the air right off the bat, the start, your starting area. Take her up. Flip her around quick, figure out what's going on, and if anything pops up, it'll pop up. This isn't actually a completely save file, brand new save file. It's a second region I'm in doing some work. So um, I wanted to just kind of throw it, throw it out there because I don't think most of you will see it for a while, so it won't ruin anything for you. When you get out there and you've scouted a little bit with your drone, stop. Good. Go back in, keeping the truck off. Go to binoculars, and it's your left and right sticks. Or, you know, triggers, I guess. Not triggers. Bumpers. And you just go around in a circle like this and search everything. And you can hear right over there something. It's this thing right in front of us. This is getting selected. That's why there's that noise. Right? You just circle around quickly. Go do a 360 in front, around your whole area. Right? When you're done, press M, and you'll see that the area has expanded significantly by doing that. And you've done almost nothing. And you can do that for every area. I would recommend that you have your scout. You can, the higher up, the better, it seems. And it'll help you save some time and money. Okay? Time and money because when you take a truck and you have to go multiple times up and down an area, you might not have the fuel you need. You might have to buy an expansion you don't want to buy. Or drain another truck out. Take more time. Throw another truck out that way to get the truck. If it's first out there that's out of fuel, some more fuel. Next thing you know, you're wasting hours and hours and hours. Or... You know, for most gamers, you're going to hit the night and go, wow, I did like two missions. What the hell? Why did it take so long? Because you didn't plan. And uh, this scouting will help a lot of that. Okay? Let's move on to the next tip. This next one is about touching on mon managers. One part about this is each mission will sometimes have a requirement for, for a person. However, you're allowed to have up to three. So let's go to this mission. And you can see over here there's three. Three slots. That means you have yourself and three of it, as well as the four trucks you can bring. So whatever you want to do, make sure you fit, fill this first. They want a hydrolysis, 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 hydro, hydrodryalis, hydro, wow, I can really screw up a word. Anyway, this guy's coming with us. However, that doesn't mean he's done. You can see up here there's three other slots. And at the beginning, they don't explain this very well. You don't need to put a manager on every single mission to save money. But I know on this mission, I'm going to be looking around a little bit and slamming my truck around. So I'm going to put on a mechanic. And this guy, plus five supply limit. And main important thing is truck, minus 30% damage except for my wheels. Whenever I slam into stumps, rocks, fall over, crap, or trash the trees because they're sliding terrain, this guy will mean 30% less damage accrued. Means that the repair less can keep going longer. So bring him in too. Okay. Then we're going to go to the last slot, and we're going to take a, one of the people I have available as an operator. Uh, we have two of them. We're going to take her because she gives she's a drone operator. She lets us have 219 yard range. I think there might be a bug in the game where you hear the thing go low drone range, beep, 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 at like 50 yards. I've gone up to 200 almost, and I've not lost contact with the drone when she's in under my control. Maybe the beeping shouldn't be there, I don't know. The height can go higher, and the 55 yard partial scout means, I think it means when you just put the drone up, it sees more. So she's really good to have. I wouldn't bring these people every single time. Like, I know this mission, I'm in the area for the first time. I need the hydrolysis. I need the, the mechanic. I need her to be able to scout. Why not? I'm not going to make a lot of money for this mission, but I want to make sure these things get done. Okay? Let's go back to map for a minute. Press escape. Press escape. All three are there. Put the trucks you want in. Look at the map. I'm look, You can look at the map down here. I'm going to be here, and we're going to be able to scout all this. I already scouted this with, with the tip right before it, and it showed... A few extra missions. Even ones I can't even full. Oh, I can see it. I can see it a little better. Perfect. So, uh, being able to see it quickly leads to me not having to waste time. And that's the whole point of this section, is scouting is important. Okay? And some people will say, oh, yeah, I just want to go do my mission as quick as I possibly can, get it over and done with, and go on to the next one. Well, if you're going, like I said before, down the road across the map, and you're going to do a mission, and you can do the, another mission right next to it by the scouting first for two minutes compared to wasting two hours of going through really bad terrain and not bringing what you need. Like if, let's say you just need 20 parts extra than you normally hold. See what I mean? Maybe you'll choose the other truck and not have to waste a lot of time. You will feel it. I'm just trying to make it so you don't have to feel it as much. 
Okay, let's move on to the next tip. This next one is about drone usage to make sure you have a little bit extra time to do your missions. Basically what that means is if I put my drone up and I find the right path before I go into the area, it will save me time. I've actually done it in the game already where I slammed into a wall. I was like, I have to get over this wall to get up top here. And I didn't scout. And I took the step, one of the bigger trucks, and I crushed the freaking front end under uh, the suspension. Took like 70 points of damage. It's like, gee. But I got up there. I was like, all right, cool. And I go, what the hell? And then I go literally like around the corner, maybe five yards to the side, 20 yards down. And there's a, just a, a quick little drive up. And I'm like... I should make sure people don't do this because I know what, I know where that's going to happen for some people. They're going to see the quickest direct path go. I need to go there. The map doesn't show it the right way. I should save people some time. So here's how you're going to do it. You go in the mission, and yes, I'm using this this old save because I can't get to the map I want right now without doing a very long mission chain. So it's driving me nuts. I did all this work on the sec on the first map, Colorado, or sorry, not Colorado, the first map uh, that you can open up that's not tutorial maps, and I can't get back there without doing a giant test. Uh, chain of events and i can't show anyone anything so i'm going to try to fix that by the next video for tomorrow which by the way there'll be a video every single day for this which i should probably put at the start of this video um all right let's go here to drone and there might be some beeping so be prepared for that because i think i have her up here the one woman who will take push the uh, range a bit farther now we're going to go over here and scout a little bit and the drone's going to lose signal you can see the dead center of the screen the if the bars are getting smaller and smaller and smaller but we're just going to keep going I want to see how far we can go. I mean, bad. Oh, it does stop it. Okay. So that's something good to know. So that's the range we go. It's 82 right now. I've had it up to 200 with that one woman, like I told you guys in the tip before. And she helps a great deal. It'll still beep. The signal will get bad, but it'll show you some stuff. And you can see on there, like, I'm seeing, like, supply drops. Um, I'm seeing pathways to go. I can get an aerial view much better than using a map. In the game now it's good to use the map but i mean if you're like hey should i go that way take a scout and look i'm not saying go across the whole map to check it out but maybe the first time get a lay of the land and figure out what you want to do okay let's go on to the next tip i'm giving this one its own little chapter for a second because i think it's important a lot of times i i was trying i checked it out right off the bat because i know snow runner was wonderful at making you waste fuel for no reason so when you're going to go scout and you're gonna go run all over the place, you're gonna use fuel. But did you know that you can also turn off your truck? Which, it says it in the tutorial some places, but not really, in the codex it does. If you wanna go, like we have our truck off right now. Like you can tell, watch. All right, truck is on. Truck is off. Hey, we can use our drone. The truck is off though, we're not using fuel, which it will use if you leave your truck on, right? And you can look around as much as you want, not have any kind of time constraints if the truck is off. What about, what about Binox? Why would you need the truck for the Binox? So you look around, you find stuff, you see an airdrop with the, with the Binox, you get a little bit of reward for it. I'm glad I used a new save for this. You can see other, other areas, it's nice to use. Now, it does not work, all right, it does not work on the metal detector it cannot be used now. Or the echo sounder. Everything else, though, on the scout, though. The winch only works in the scout vehicles. It doesn't work in the ones. A lot of you people that play Snow Runner and Mud Runner know all that already. I'm just making sure some of the newer people might not might not know it. The echo sounder, by the way, if you're ever going to cross a body of water, I don't care if it is, like, the tiniest little bit of water that you can't see the bottom of, use the echo sounder. You're going to thank me later. Okay? Between the echo sounder having to have power, and the metal detector and the Binox not, I think that's a good little tiny little tip. Let's move on to the next one. One thing you should know, if you go out there and you have to use your drone for an exploration mission, like at the very top, it says Ancient Fire, explore the area 32%, and you need to get to 100%, you might be like flying your drone around going, man, where's the edge? One thing you can do is mark the area edge with your waypoints. And when you go into the drone itself, the waypoints will appear on your map. Now there's a drop right there, but you can see the waypoints on your map. And when you hit them with the drone, I believe they change. Let's check this out. I just want to show you a little example. It doesn't need to seal the whole thing. Just a piece of it. Yes, you can go way past what says bad signal when you have the right person. Well, I guess not. My bad. So you have to do each one individually, but... Um, it will make it easier on yourself. So we're already at the 42%. And yeah, that beeping will get in the way, but 
it doesn't really matter. I've gone really far to the point where the game bugs. Like that signal, I've gone as far as I think 190 meters away distance. Nothing happened. The drone didn't go away. Maybe they're going to patch it, but I mean, all you got to do is fly around and get your little waypoints. And then when you can't, the one thing you can't do, you can't just stop in the middle. You don't have to fly it back to your truck. Is instead of redoing all the maps, you can right click on one and move it over and then go to the next one and keep doing it that way. It's not perfect. It's not like the most elegant solution, but it will work for you. Okay? It's because as soon as we move the waypoint, the other one's there. You just gotta do airdrop with the way by the way, that's important. If you want to use with Binox, it's actually better to use your drones. The drones, when they pick it up, consider it discovering a new waypoint. Even though you're seeing it with your Binox, the game doesn't count it so far as part of discover new um points of interest in regards to your missions so make sure you remember that every time you go make yourself a little watchtower basically yourself with binox and a drone do the drone first and then the binox will pick up what's left or discover what you haven't figured out okay hope it works out for you let's go to the next tip